Okay, so are these now more questions directed at you? Now you can ask whatever you want, nice. and don't worry about you. Don't have to worry about being respectful because there. What? It's I'll be respectful. It's just us now, Go okay? Ahead. So I don't know. There's somebody's yeah, listening. Yeah, wait, what? <laughs> well, okay, hold up. So. No, listen, the point yeah, is I'm a steward of the portal, and I'm not going to, you know, if anybody gets disrespectful when we've got them on the line, right. get out, we're done. Right. Exactly. But now, but they're not on the line anymore, right? We're I don't now. think, not officially, we haven't requested them. They are presumably listening in because there's this feeling that you get. Right, they're 100% They're still listening here. in, they're watching, but I, I didn't. Be, I won't be disrespectful. Okay. I'll try not to be. Try if, not to be. Okay, if any of these make you uncomfortable, you don't have to answer. Um, it's impossible to make me uncomfortable. Right. So just this is just for stuff to like help my audience get to know you guys a little bit better, because uh, I know people want to know. Um, so how old are you two? If you want to answer, <laughs> I'll be sixty-one <laughs> in two months. Yeah, oh, that's right. Happy almost birthday. Happy almost. Uh, I'm twenty-seven and a half. Twenty-seven and a half. That's right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, how did you guys get involved in spiritual healing? When did this start for you guys? My brother died. In 1990, January 17th, 1990, and uh, he had been sick for a while, and he had had already a death, and they sh jolted his heart and brought him back, experience, and there had been something that happened during that, and it wasn't the classic, I went through the light, but there was like, whoa, I was still around. <laughs> I could see what they were doing. Uh, okay, wow, so we were wrong, as it turns out. We don't just die when the bodies die, because it's definitely <laughs> watching. And to clarify, we come from a really scientific family, a very medicine-based family. Like mm. doctors? Like uh, doctors? My dad's a surgeon. My sister taught in a medical school. She's written a textbook on the cerebellum. My other sister is oh, an wow. ICU nurse. Blah, the brother blah, who died blah. was a wildlife biologist. So that was the frame of reference. Mm. My mom's a mass mathematician. She charted rocket trajectories from NASA. Her the double major was in chemistry. Chemistry, accounting, wow. you yeah. know. So... My brother said I was wrong, and so we knew he might die, and uh, he promised that uh, if he could, he would come back and tell me what was going on. So three weeks after he died, I was taking the uh, junk mail to put it in the recycle bin in the laundry, <laughs> and I looked out the window and he was standing outside the window <laughs> and uh, he had played practical jokes on me all his life and so this is like a really good one you know he had me scared the bejeebies out of me and I'm nothing like coming back from the grave yeah get your sister, you get your sister. <laughs> right and so he scared me but it did definitely get my attention and uh, trying to keep the relationship alive and at the time he died in tax season and she was a, I was CPA. a CPA. I was a partner in a, a CPA. Partner in a CPA firm. Wow. Partner in a CPA firm. Help me out. So <laughs> uh, mainstream is mainstream. Super normal lady. Super yeah, normal, you know. So it was tax season, and so and it was before cell phones. So the car was still a sacred place, <laughs> and that was the only time that I didn't have somebody yapping at me. Baby husband. Baby partners, husband. Clients. CPA practice. So he would come and he would sit in the passenger seat in my car. And how I would know, I'd just be driving and then like all the hair on my arms, the hair on that side of the body would just start standing up. It's like, whoa, whoa. it's here. And uh, it took about a year and a half of trying to keep the relationship alive, you know? And, and he was such a unique person so there was just that had to be him it wasn't anybody else and then one day he was uh, oh he said you're just missing it you're missing the whole thing and he and he turned sideways and disappeared which you can do when you're dead and then i had just been paying attention to him and when he turned sideways and disappeared, I paid attention to what else was there. It's like, oh wow, this is a really big place. Oh, we move. Oh, look at this. And there were a couple, uh, like, angel looking people over there, kind of smiling, saying, come over here, come over here. So I went over there and they kind of patted the cushion. Here, sit down. 
And they started just talking in a very gentle way, showing me little cool things, just in a very gentle, easy way, like you teach a like child, a you know, don't freak them out. And then uh, after about two and a half, three and a half years, something like that, they said, okay, you're not doing the work you're supposed to be doing in the world. You're wasting your life. Sell your practice. Sell it to who? I don't care. Sell it to your partners. I don't care what you do. Sell it, get out. And I, I never said no. But it did not move with haste toward the door. And by the time I did sell, I was starting to get sick. And by the time, y you can't just sell a CPA practice, turn over the keys, and bolt. It mm -hmm. takes a year. And so by the time I got out of there, I was really good and sick. And I was uh, disabled. Sick for seven years, but only disabled for two. And... Uh, nothing worked western medicine had nothing to offer and then i tried these alternative therapies you know started to slide into the freaky fringe you know chiropractic acupuncture and again came from a family where that was not cool yeah, yeah, no nobody went to chiropractors no. right yeah, acupuncture yeah. what witch doctor yeah nobody nobody did that so and then started using those cool energy tricks because it wasn't really getting better you know and then and life is shit. When you're sick, life is shit. Mm -hmm. So, uh, started using them and it worked. Started feeling not so bad. Started feeling not so bad. Started feeling like just what they were teaching right. me. And then there was my friend Jane. And Jane had <laughs> this ankle that kept spraining. She just kept yeah. spraining it, kept spraining it. And I you know, when you're once you're trained in psychic and you know what's going on, it's like, well, you know, that oh. past life snake bite, that is not helping. So first <laughs> things first, let's get that trauma oh, out that of there. Yeah. And then it'd be a problem. But how do you say that to somebody? So I'm sitting there, oh my God. Is that God. what a trauma strand is? There's no such thing as a trauma strand. There's no. a trauma. And as you pull well, it out, like it can start no to way. elongate no, like a real. ribbon. It's, it's an energy structure. The traumas are in there, and how do you get them out? And then they start to elongate and look like ribbons or strands like when or something. you pull something. a sticky thing, and it starts to stretch, right. you know? Yeah, like silly putty or Sticky something. gum. Is that yeah, something that putty. can be done, like, now? You have to, uh, what do you mean? Would To demonstrate to my audience, would we be able to pull a trauma strand out I'm of I'm going to merge with Wubby. What did you say? He just asked if you would pull a trauma strand out of I it. I mean, if, if we're willing, it's up to well, you all. I don't so know how it works. So this was the thing that we offered. We said, okay, well, you could be a, a demo subject, but the thing about it is it can it be personal. It can be real personal. Right. And you probably don't want to share and that I with... And I don't... Like, if you're using a name Wubby that's not even your name, mm -hmm. I would put lots of chips on. You probably wouldn't want to show whatever it is. Your past life stuff. Your, your past, past life, life, like before well, this life. Yeah, they, usually they know all that. Well, can they? I don't know. It's See, that's the thing. No, we don't what know. Was, what if it's good stuff? Well, it, not be? it is. Okay. But if it's the trauma, the trauma is never the good. Never stuff. the happy life. It's never the happy. If we were it's to do only that now, ever how long the bad. Would, would we be able to? We don't have to. It's good. We can give it a go. Do you have any pain? You have to have pain, tightness, pressure, discomfort. You have to have something. Something going on in your a body. A symptom. My you have TMJ. I he has TMJ. You have TMJ. Are you serious? Is that real? It's real, yeah. Do you want to tell him? We all have TMJ. Psychic. It's, that's <laughs> it's one of the psychic. most common psychic, psychic TMJ. What can I say? I am not what? making it up. That's so many of my easy. clients, when I start to work with them, I say, okay, just mm. tell me your stuff. And I'm writing it down. And if they're super psychic, the first thing they all say is, I have TMJ. TMJ. And they all say it like, there's nothing you can be done, whatever. It's just mm. this thing I have. Mm. And the eyes always light up. Because, of course, you have TMJ. Of course, you have TMJ. Welcome. <laughs> How's it going? Can you remedy this? How's your TMJ that you used well to Well, it have? depends. It depends. It all depends. Mm -hmm. All right. So, friends, friends, we were wrong. I'm sorry. Knock, knock, knock. Tap, tap, tap. So well, sorry. these guys are there. Or I'm wrong. Yeah, I know. I've just got to be polite. You don't assume. We have a request. Do you know about his TMJ? Somebody's coming forward. Yeah, they know. He's got TMJ. What are we supposed to do? Does he? He doesn't need first. So first things first, I ask, do you need the TMJ? Because 
What if you need it, right? What if there's something that it's supposed to trigger for you when you're 50 years old? Blah, right. blah. You know? Mm -hmm. Not really. It's like... Here we go. Do you need to merge first? Sorry, there's I'm a I'm just kind of looking. Okay. I'm just observing first. So the one that keeps coming up, it is from a past life, and there's some kind of animals, like maybe oxen or something. Yeah, big, big animal big, horns. Uh, but I think it's oxen, and it's an arid place. I often get the way the place feels first. Yeah. It's arid, and these, it may be Middle India East? or Middle mm, East or something. Pakistan, Pakistan Afghanistan. That that the stands, somewhere in the stands. That's maybe. what he just said, somewhere in the stands. And the, this is, he's still young, oh, he's like a, a boy, he's and a boy. he's got the responsibility to get these oxen or whatever it is to go do something. And it used to be your older brother's job, but something, something happened, happened to the older brother, to and then your dad says, okay, you need to watch out for the oxen now and i think the oxen stomped the brother or something something right? bad and happened so you'd be a little nervous taking on that job what happened to the last guy? what happened to the last okay. guy so uh really nervous nice kid nice kid kind of skinny yeah. no extra food in that family mm -hmm. boy skinny hard times what happened why is it in his jaw Why is it in his jaw? Let's just, so what we teach, when we used to teach this, we would teach what matters most is to get it out. And so to find it energetically and then just start to gently try to pull it out. And as we're trying to pull it out, sometimes we can get the understanding of it. But what matters most is to get it out. And so there was this decision while being out with the oxen and there's nobody in that past life in that past life being out with the oxen trying to get them to whatever it is you're supposed to do and get them back this is a filming hazard <laughs> welcome so welcome it's usually not as disruptive in the f microphone as it sounds in our ears at the time. Good, good. Usually we think, oh my God, and it's that's ruined. It. It's, it's all ruined. ruined. It's all ruined. And usually it's not as bad as we think it is. All right. It's bad. Sorry. Okay. Onward. Acceptable? Yeah. They say acceptable? Okay. Hold on. All right, so there's some kind of decision of I'm not going to... I think it's I'm not going to listen. It could be I'm, I'm not, not going to listen. listen. I'm not going to do the scary thing. I'm not for definitely damn not sure. doing the scary thing. I will not. I'm not going to do it and you can't make me. And so there's this like this decision of I'm not going to do what I'm supposed to do and you can't make me. And uh, And this is the soul, you know? This is the soul of a little boy in a scary situation. So let's not be judgmental. So let's not be judgmental. And, but the decision was, I'm not, I'm not, and kind of getting more and more antagonistic. And it's an internal struggle, an internal uh, uh, fight. Like and then it triggers panic. And some bad thing happens because of the panic. That's the feeling, like he gets super panicked, I'm not going to do what I'm going to do, and then maybe he runs, and the running freaks Goose out the, the oxen, oxen, and the, and the oxen, oxen run, go stomp and then him. Pull. Whereas if you had just done what you were supposed to do, it the gone bad better. thing wouldn't have happened, but you couldn't have known that, you know? It's a mistake. So now we just see if we can find, I uh, find the hooks, and it's hooked on a couple different points. This is why people do drugs sometimes because um, the some of the drugs can kind of like uh, uh, wear down the resistance to the voice of the soul. 
And we actually think it's a super bad idea to do drugs because of the astrals and the poltergeist that we were talking about earlier. That's a way to and get messed up. Th that's a way to get really messed up. So we think, stay away from the drugs. But this is a reason why some people do it, is because they want to, uh, some aspect of self, some aspect of the body, mind, soul, collective, wants to work more in harmony as a body, mind, soul team, and less push-pull. Mm -hmm. And so people do drugs to kind of uh, chill out the internal struggle and then unfortunately it abrades their natural resistance to poltergeists and right, now they got the some problems. Right, the panic is gone but now you can't see or hear what's actually going on and your defenses are down. Yeah, that's a bad, you know? bad plan. But if we can just pull this out, it'll help. Now as with our friend Jane back in whenever that was, 1997 or whatever it is, yeah. I don't know. Uh, we know that the snake bite wasn't helping her ankle. We know that this past life trauma is not helping your TMJ. We're going to get this t past life trauma out. Will that be all that's necessary to <laughs> solve the TMJ? I'd be Super surprised, unlikely. but it might help. You going to merge? Apparently not. Yeah, I was going to say. Apparently what not. What kind of rule are you going to break? You want to explain it to him first? No. Why don't you do it? Okay. So, uh... Maybe it's for you to do. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I should just shut up. I'll shut up. Excellent. Go for it. Okay, so as part of the technique, part of what we're trained to do is... Do you know the electromagnetic field that runs around the body? People call it the energy body. Sh sure. Okay, awesome. I've heard of it. Awesome. So the secret is we all have one, and it runs through your physical body, runs through your emotional body, runs through your mental body... And by working with it, that's how you're able to have miracle healings. And what we're trained to do is we're trained to soften our own electromagnetic field and merge in with the subject electromagnetic field. So we can start to feel how it feels to be in your physical body. We can start to feel your pain. We can start to feel your emotions, your mental state. We do not read your mind. We do not see your thoughts. We don't see anything that you don't want us to see or that they're not supposed to see, so we're not peeking into your personal business. Mm -hmm. But it becomes possible for us to get inside what's going on with you. And then from that state of actually being merged with the energy body, it's entirely possible to get a hold of that stuff that's causing the pain and to get it out. Mm -hmm. Do you guys reject, like, modern medicine as a result of this? What we used to say in the classes, when we were teaching the classes, people would ask us, if I'm in a car accident, take me to the hospital. If I have a broken arm, I want it set. Okay. So, if you actually wanted to get that trauma out, that's just kind of riding around right there. But, but just to complete that but if you notice that there's a lot of things that western medicine doesn't handle very well mm -hmm. right they just don't and so western medicine tends to be a little arrogant and to say that if they don't have the answer then an answer does not exist yeah that's true and that has not been our experience our experience has been that there's some things that western medicine does extremely well and there's some things that they don't know how to handle and that they should just say, we don't know how to handle this, why don't you look to alternative medicine? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So, if Did that answer your question? Yeah, good point. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I was being rude. So, if you want to get out that trauma that's lodged, like, right there by the jaw, the only way to actually do it for real would be to merge in with your energy body, and again, we're not she reading means your She means she doing it. Oh, me? I do. Do you, do you guys want to merge in now? Is that's that what really she's well, offering. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to do it without your permission, because that's gross. That would be gross. But right. You, it, merging, you have to get consent? Yeah. Or what kind of person Or what kind you? of person would it be? Right, right. Don't we want to yeah. talk about that, then, if we're not going to get consent? Agreed. Yeah, that's yeah. gross. Right. That's and gross. So that's why... Yeah. Once we got a pretty good grip on where is the trauma lodged, where did it come from, that's why I said, hang on a minute, mm -hmm. we have to do the merge talk, because right. if we were actually going to pop that out of you, hmm. uh, uh, that's something that I would need to do. Jamie, I would be honored for you to merge with me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> All right. Did it just happen? Or no? No. no. Oh. No, no. That was a handshake. I see. That was a handshake. That's a handshake. I, I like This that. is a hole in the ground. <laughs> Hey, he on. might not get that reference. <laughs> she <right>. got it. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm so I wasn't okay. trying to be mean. We actually like you a lot. I like okay. you a lot. Well, All right. like you this is fun. Mm. He reminds me of Mike, South Africa Mike. Right? Yeah. I have a friend named Mike who I went to college with, and we oh. studied abroad together, and I liked him a lot, and you remind me a lot of him. Yeah. Okay. 